Welcome to another Automatico uh, presentation. This time I would like to show you a bit of integration with the messaging <coughs> and in that particular case uh, based on JMS. So that will allow us to sort of target the <coughs> excuse me, sort of, uh, sort of target the traditional message oriented middleware uh, use cases. So we can connect to in our, in our presentation IBM MQ and exchange information with an XML payload, which is kind of a, a standard approach to uh, pushing and receiving the information through the JMS uh, messaging. So let's get started. In our uh, use case, we will have two workflows. One extremely simple that is responsible for pushing messages and those are going to be sent through the person, S person, uh, channel and it will map the person as the object the important part here is that the uh, person object is uh, our project so rather simple as you can see we have the xml marshaller so we use the jacksb here again quite common when using the uh, traditional messaging with jms and xml so we have just the name and uh, age of the person uh, so this will directly push the uh, the person serialized to XML and push on the JMS queue. And then we have the receive one. Receive is responsible for receiving from the same queue, uh, printing it out and creating a, uh, a user task to, to look at the results of the information. So without further ado, let's look at the important parts. Meaning if we look at the configuration, here we have the JMS configuration. So we specify the what are the destination so that uh, that's our queue in ibm web serum queue this is only for artemis so we don't use it at the moment uh, and from the web serum queue perspective how it is configured so first of all we need to configure the dependency so we know that we have the, the client and we can create connection factory and uh, last is to create the actual connection factory so here we have the information about how you can First of all, start the uh, IBM MQ as a token container for logging uh, for <coughs> uh, logging in, uh, so for sending the messages to and receiving them from, and then it's the actual the producing the, the connection factory with the connection details and so on and so forth. So that is for testing purposes. So we need to deliver the, the connection factory that will be used by the workflows. All right, so let's get started with that. All right, uh, so we first of all start IBM MQ and then we start our application, the automatic the JMS. So as soon as it starts, it will give us the possibility to interact with the workflows. And we click in, quickly look at the output here. So it's starting up, so we have it started. It's connected to the queues, as you can see here. So let's get going and just look at the swagger. So we have the receive process and we send and we have the send one. So let's quickly give it a try and send, let's say, whatever business key. And then we just specify John and it's 20 years old. So as soon as we publish that, get the reply ID, whatever, because it's based on the business key, we can take a look at them information so we sent information receive the information so if we go back here and look at the receive mq and just search for those we should find one instance and we have it so as you can see the person with the age uh, 20 and name john is already received but let's say that we would like to filter out uh, on the receiver side to make sure that we can only receive when the business key is of a particular value so this can be easily done here by altering the message definition and using the custom attribute. So we can specify here selector and let's say business key equal test. So it should only receive the uh, messages that have the business key, which is a, a custom property on the JMS message with the value of test. So if we just do that, just save it without don't want to validate it right now and if we see it here so the as you can see the live reload works so the service has been 
restart it and let's go back here and let's say okay we still use the whatever we use let's say mary and if we just send this and look at the logs of our service you can see that's only the uh, sending part it's not the receiving part that we had before so now let's do the same and just send this to test and if we send that then you can see that we send and receive so we have the full control over what is actually happening from within the workflow definition so this is what it allows us to do and i would like to bring up as well the sending part of it so at the sending part why we actually could uh, set the business key as a JMS property on the message it is because we have that defined here so we have options to specify as many uh, properties as we like the main requirement to be set on the JMS message is that it is prefixed with JMS as soon as the JMS is there it will be considered as a JMS property and with that we can easily append the information on the message itself but it, it might not be enough, so that's why we have the options to <coughs> extend uh, capabilities of that and automatically comes with the input converter and output converters, which are responsible for producing uh, uh, and consuming messages and how the payload is uh, transformed into the object that workloads operate on. So in this particular case, <coughs> uh, we have the person one. So as you can see, we use, first of all, the Chuck P. Marshaller here. So this is how we know that the XML that we sent is actually being delivered to the message. So it's a automatic uh, does the JSON conversion by default. Uh, we configure it with explicit output converter that does the person to string and we use the JXP. But at the same time, if you look at the output converter, it has the option to create a metadata. And that is where you can put in your additional uh, properties of any type, uh, whatever JMS supports you, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So this is how you could extend the capabilities if the default one are not uh, uh, good enough. And last, what I would like to show is that if we look at the function factory here, we have the link to the web sphere console. And if we just go back here and try to log in, yes, it is self signed certificate and then just add me and we just log in and we look at the manage local queue managers and we use the dev queue one as you can see we have one message there and as you can see it's an xml message and then you look at the properties of various things we have the sent from the automatical with the information about priority expiration and so on and so forth so we have all the data in there and the xml content within our mq manager so with that i would like to thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for another videos around the automatic thanks